Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Alexander Hamilton Dunlop. I'm a guide and teacher of life, helping you to play your cards right from darkness to light. Unbeknownst to most people, the ordinary deck of 52 playing cards is actually an ancient book of wisdom. The regular deck of 52 cards is an ancient book of wisdom that was hidden in plain sight. And once we understand what's in the cards for us, we can master the game of our lives. So I've started a nonprofit foundation called Life Elevated to share this ancient knowledge so that more of us can live enlightened lives, certainly that we can take our lives to the next level, elevate our game, make better choices, make more informed decisions, make wiser moves in our life. That's what happens once we know our cards to play. And as some of you know, I wrote a book about it. It's called Play Your Cards Right, A Sacred Guide to Life on Earth. So if you want to find out about your cards to play, you can check it out in my book. We all have 13 cards based on mathematics. The mathematics of our date of birth. So it's all numbers. And based on numbers, we have 13 cards in our life path. And in our cards to play, we can see what are our gifts in life? What's our true purpose in life? What are the challenges that we're here to face so we can see them clearly? and overcome them. What is it that we're secretly afraid of? We can see that in our Pluto card. That's the ninth card of our sequence. And so that we can face our fears and integrate our Pluto energy and then it becomes our greatest gift to give. So if you want to find out about your cards to play, you can do it in my book. Now, <coughs> excuse me, I need to take a drink of water. So every week, there is a new card in play, right? There's 52 weeks in the year. There are 52 cards in the deck. So in these weekly videos, I want to explain to you what is the energy in play for the week, right? We have lifelong cards, which I already mentioned. And then every week, there is an energy that's in play. It's like the quantum field. And understanding what energy is present, it's a little bit like, like understanding the weather report. So you might want to think of these as like a weekly weather forecast to help you understand, should I put on rain gear or should I have sunblock on? What's, uh, what's happening in the week? Okay. Energetically, the card in play for this week is the Eight of Clubs. Like that. That's the symbol of the Eight of Clubs. Last week, as some of you know, we were playing the Seven of Clubs. So last week, with the Seven of Clubs present, with this one, that's the symbol of the Seven of Clubs, there may have been some ups and some downs. So i just ask you to reflect for a few minutes on how your week went last week. Did you have some mental breakthroughs? where you could see how all the dots connected, right? Did you have some ups last week where you solved some important puzzle in your life and saw a new way of organizing the information so that you could elevate your perspective? And, and by the same token, perhaps last week, did you have moments of self-doubt when, when you dropped down inside your own psyche and questioned everything and doubted yourself and wondered whether it was even worthwhile to keep doing what you're doing. Maybe you were completely struck with hopelessness, right? That's the extremes of seven. It can go up or down. So just, you know, take a few moments for yourself and reflect on, did you have mental ups and downs last week? And if you had downs, how did you pivot and adjust when you were feeling down? And it's very important. Remember, we would have all been experiencing that energy. So we might have 
gone down in our minds at the same time as someone else in our life, and that might have led to a really bitter argument of criticism. Or if you had some really up moments with people in your life last week, that could have led to some really enlightened conversations or genius breakthroughs. So just notice for yourself how these energies are playing out and how you are engaging them, because we always have free will to choose how we want to play with the energy. Hi, Norma, and Sarah, Megan, Roseanne. Hello, hello. Now, this week, we're playing the Eight of Clubs. Okay. The Eight is a symbol of infinity. Right? This is the symbol. Symbol of the eight. Does that look like an eight on the screen? I'm not sure. And, and the clubs is the mind. So infinite mental power. Right? That's what's in play this week. So having so much mental power in play can mean great analytical abilities. Right? An ability to solve problems. So finding a graceful flow fluid solution where we might be able to weave together different data points and find how it all flows together. So this would be a great week to problem solve or troubleshoot things that are bothering you or have bothered you. It would also be a great week to find a graceful and elegant solution to something that again, requires a solution, something that has been a question for you. And what I invite you to do is to look for a graceful solution. Look for an elegant and easy fit that everything elegantly and easily fits into place. If, all right now, so this would be the pitfall to avoid this week. This is, don't do this. Right. Um, and be alert for when this may happen, and not may, but it probably will happen. And, he, and then you have a choice as, as it's arising of whether you give it more energy or, or whether you realize, oh, there it is, and then you change course. Right. So be on the lookout for forcing or insisting or trying to push you, your point of view on a solution, trying to force something like trying to yeah trying to like make it go just because your mind wants it to be a certain way what can happen then is that you'll tangle things up even tighter and you'll create a big mess because of your own mental insistence and so what's at stake and this is very important now what's at stake this week is relaxing your own perspective and having fluid expectations. So that's what's at stake. Because if you insist on your expectations, that's when you may get tangled up. So just reflect for a moment on what it might look like to Literally, in your mind, make more space to allow for there to be room for adaptation or room for the unexpected. Right? How can I, this week, mentally open to allow more space? How can I allow someone else's perspective and opinion into my own consciousness? And how can I allow for the unexpected to happen so that I can improvise and adapt? So actually, I'm going to write that down because I like that a lot for myself. <laughs> Affirmation for this week. My mind is open to what is. Let's start with that. My mind is open to what is. And let's, let's also write, I know I have the mental power to adapt and improvise. I spelled that wrong. 
because that's what's at stake. One of the reasons why we might force or insist on our way of thinking is that we think we have to. Because if we don't, then things are going to go awry and things are going to fall apart. I mean, that's the fear. And again, this is now very important to get this. The fear that's underneath our mental insistence. And it's a fear that things are going to go to hell in a handbasket. Things are going to fall apart. If I don't control this, it's all going to go to hell. And it's everything is going to go to become messy and chaotic. So in order to relax the mental control and the mental insistence is the realization that, oh, I have the mental power to adapt and improvise. I don't have to force my way. I'm mentally strong enough to reach a bigger, more expansive conclusion. That's very important to recognize that we have that ability because that will come up this week. How open-minded are you? How mentally agile are you? Or are you defensive and argumentative? You may find yourself in some defensive arguments this week if you're not careful. Trying to prove your point. Trying to insist that your political perspective is the right one. Trying to insist that you know what you're talking about or trying to insist that really the milk was left in the fridge exactly the way you left it. We can get into these silly insistences that we insist that it, it is what we think it is. But in truth, our brain knows so little. As powerful as an instrument it is, and this week we have infinite mental power to utilize this wonderful instrument we have to solve problems and create solutions. It's wonderful. We have this, this powerful tool to craft the world that we inhabit. That's what our mental power does for us, is with our minds, we craft our worlds. I'll say that again. With our mind, we craft our world. In plural, for all of us, with our minds, we craft our worlds. We each live in our own world. Now that's sometimes a jab or an accusation of someone. You live in your own world. Well, actually, we all live in our own world. And our worlds all overlap and intermingle. And it's important to know that for many reasons, but in particular because this week it's about weaving your world together with someone else's world. This is the figure eight symbol. How do you weave together your perspective, your mindset, and your world with someone else's mindset, with someone else's world? How do you weave that together? Do you do it gracefully, fluidly, and elegantly with an open mind? Or are you defensively insistent and trying to force someone else to think the way that you think? If you're trying to force and insist, you may inadvertently suffocate the very people who you claim to be helping. You may mentally stifle them. All, all in the name of weaving together a joint solution. Right? The right way to think is the way that I think. Right? That can be the major downfall of if you're not thinking the way I'm thinking, then you're just not right. Because my thoughts are the right thoughts. Right? This would be the great um, stubborn hubris that could be present this week. In fact, the realization is what real strength looks like is fluidity. Mental strength looks like fluid motion. Right? This is the great Taoist realization that water is stronger than rock. rock is immovable and stubborn, it seems stronger, but actually over time, water wears away the rock. So the water smooths out the rough surfaces of rock and eventually disintegrates the rock altogether. 
And the power of water is in its fluidity, is in its motion. This week, you're going to have an opportunity to choose. Am I a rock or am I water? Am I a rock or am I water? Am I stubbornly insistent or am I fluid and graceful? So let's practice our affirmations. Take a deep breath before we say it, and then say it out loud. And we'll, we'll do both of them. My mind is open to what it is. Mind is open to what is. My mind is open to what is. And notice how saying it out loud actually makes it so. That's the power of our mind. The mind constructs the sentence, utilizing language, and then we language it into being. That's the whole point of wedding vows or saying a verbal, you know, having a verbal contract with someone. Well, you gave me your word. This matters, right? We give our word, and our word is our want. Our word is our magic wand. So let's let's say the second affirmation. We'll take a breath. I know I have the mental power to adapt and improvise. I know. I have the mental power to adapt and improvise. I know I have the mental power to adapt and improvise. Breathe into that. Notice how that maybe softens your energy you a sense of being more fluid. Now, why is this important? Why is this important? How we show up energetically conditions how everyone and everything else shows up for us. Right? It's been made popular with this idea idea of the law of attraction. Fundamentally, the energy that we bring forth from within ourselves is then how we carve out and shape and mold our reality. So this is our great power. We are co-creators of our experience because everyone else is creating as well. And life itself is creating through us, primarily. We are the instruments of creation. And we create the reality that we want. So what I'm giving you are the, the silver bullets, the golden nuggets, the diamond jewels, the, uh, I don't know, I've run out, out of metaphors, the uh, mantras of, something, something, the, the things that you can use, the words that you can use to craft the reality that you want, and the mindset and the heart set to do so. So, as always, I wish you good, good luck playing the game of your life. I invite you to play your life 
like it's your favorite game to play. All right, have, have fun, everyone.